Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I don't know why, but it seems to sound better. Thank you. <laughs> well, welcome to the White House. You may not have thought this building was a part of the White House. That's what they call it. Maybe White House Complex would be better, but then that sounds like a neurosis. <laughs> well, anyway, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. As you know, we're here to honor the top guns of the federal establishment, the best of the best in serving the American people. When our administration came to Washington six years ago, we promised the American people a government that stopped doing what it shouldn't be doing and did, well, well, whatever was left. Our honorees today are helping to fulfill that promise. They lead the leaders of the federal establishment. They've been chosen the most outstanding members of the Senior Executive Service. We should always remember that their work is important, not only in the immediate sense of what they do, but in a broader way as well. Yes, their jobs may be managerial or technical, but in a broader sense, their work is to help ensure the success of the greatest experiment in self-government in the history of the world, an experiment called the United States of America. Just in case you're thinking that when I went over to Ireland a few years back, I sneaked in a side trip and kissed the Blarney Stone, let me tell you about just a few of our awardees. Among them is Frederick Rawl, who's been called the father of the modern Air Force. Then there's John Simpson, the director of the Secret Service, the man who planned protection for all the presidential candidates in 1984, for the Los Angeles Olympics, for the 40th anniversary celebrations at the United Nations, and who currently serves as president of Interpol. And there's one of the world's outstanding researchers on the workings of the human brain, Dr. Frederick Goodwin. To give you an idea of the impact of Dr. Goodwin's work, I'm told he's in the top one-tenth of one percent of all scientists most frequently cited in scholarly writings. I could go on and on, but some of you are leaders in the critical work of getting federal spending under control. Some of you are leading and rebuilding America's defense. Charles Nufakis is helping to bring the 600-ship Navy to reality under budget. Others are helping to formulate and implement policy at the highest levels of diplomatic, military, and trade issues. Still others are enforcing the laws of our country, while others are making federal programs give good service to their clients. I'm very proud of every one of you, and I know your colleagues and your families are proud. So let me just say on behalf of the American people, thank you for all you're doing for our country. And now I'm going to turn to Connie Horner, who is going to officiate from here on. The award winners will come forward one by one. From the Department of Agriculture, Terry B. Kinney, Jr. From the Department of Commerce, Richard Hallgren. From the Office of the Secretary of Defense, Clyde O. Gleister. Charles A. Hawkins, Jr. Trafton J. Loveland. J. David Martin. From the Department of the Air Force, Frederick T. Rawl, Jr. John K. Scott. From the Department of the Army, Victor Lindner. Dr. Lewis R. Schaefer. From the Department of the Navy, E. Thomas Comstock.
Dr. Jerome Carl, James H. Mills, Jr., Charles P. Nemfakos, Wallace T. Sansone. From the Environmental Protection Agency, Howard M. Messner. Dr. John A. Moore. From the Department of Health and Human Services, Frederick K. Goodwin. And Martha A. McSteen. From the Department of Housing and Urban Development, Shirley A. Evans. From the Department of the Interior, Joseph W. Gorell. And Edward L. Hasty. From the Department of Justice, Donald J. Gavin. Mark M. Richard. And John J. Toomey. From the Department of Labor, Robert T. Jones. From the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, Dr. Raymond S. Colliday. Dr. Noel W. Henners. Eugene F. Kranz. From the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, Thomas E. Murley. From the Securities and Exchange Commission, Catherine B. McGrath. And Michael K. Walensky. From the Department of State, David A. Colson. And Roger B. Feldman. From the Department of Transportation, Raymond A. Carroll. From the Department of Treasury, Charles H. Brennan. Francis X. Cavanaugh. Robert J. Louver. Eugene H. Mock. John R. Simpson, Percy P. Woodard, Jr., from the Office of the United States Trade Representative, Dr. Harvey E. Bale, Jr., and from the Veterans Administration, Joseph L. Moore, And our last winner, Michael Rudd. Mr. President, thank you very, very well, much you. for honoring us with your presence here.
All of you are now invited to join us for a reception in honor of our award winners in the Indian Treaty Room.